So you want to see this circuit breaker. Just explain the thinking behind it. So what we're saying is that a circuit breaker for two to three weeks uh, would mean that we would be able to halt and reverse the spread of the infection right across the country. We could use that time to boost our lab capacity, to put proper local tracing processes in place, uh, and then we would have that breathing space, uh, which would uh, buy us time, really, uh, and stop the, the real danger that our NHS faces, that our hospitals are going to be filling up far too quickly over the next few weeks. And and so it would really give us the chance to, to reset and, and um, take a step back before this virus really spirals right out of control. At the same time, though, you can see why people are pretty sceptical that any circuit breaker would actually last for two to three weeks. I mean, there's a reason that Andy Burnham calls these Hotel California lockdowns because it does feel like you never actually get out uh, once you're in them. Are you really saying that after two or three weeks, if hospitalizations are still going up, if deaths are still going up, then Labour would just say, OK, that's fine, let's just lift the restrictions? I think it is really important not to waste the period of a circuit breaker. You know, it's not just everybody goes home and stays at home for two or two, three weeks and then we come back out again. And but as you say, the then question, there would be a real it? risk. That, that's not quite the question. No, but, what... but, the, but the, well, no, but the answer is to use the circuit breaker period to take the measures that have been identified as being effective in helping to manage and bring down the spread of the virus. And what we can see already with the local lockdowns, I mean, here in Manchester, we've been in a a local lockdown um, of sorts since the end of July. Rates are continuing to rise with the measures we have now. They are not working, so we have to try something different. So that's the point, isn't it? Um, the restrictions in Manchester haven't worked for 11 weeks, and that's why they haven't been lifted. They've been increased, and that's why people are very sceptical that if you do impose a two- to three-week lockdown, it's not going to be lifted after two or three weeks, is it? You can't guarantee that. Well, nobody can guarantee what's going to happen in what are the most uncertain and unpredictable circumstances. So why are you saying but that it should be just two to three makes... weeks? Because we know what makes a difference, what actions need to be taken during those two or three weeks to begin to bear down on the rate of the spread of the virus. We know that tracing contacts of those who have tested positive is absolutely crucial to managing the virus. Two or three weeks would give us time to put better local tracing processes in place. We know that swift testing and getting the results back swiftly is key to managing the spread of the virus. Two to three weeks would give us time to invest in and boost our lab capacity. Of course, I recognise uh, that we would um, have to look at the impact of the, um, lo the um, circuit breaker and, and it will take time to feed through. But the, the risk of doing nothing is even greater, frankly. If we do nothing at all, we know inevitably uh, that we are going to see this virus and the rate of spread increase and increase. Our hospitals fill up and sadly more deaths. What I am struggling to get my head around is that, you know, you have opposed stricter regional lockdowns. So you put a press release out saying that in 19 out of 20 areas they hadn't worked. And yet you're also calling for stricter measures as well. I mean, are you just trying to have your cake and eat it here? I don't really understand the consistency. No, not at all. And the, one of the many problems we've got here with the local measures is the confusion that people have uh, between what's, what they can do here, what the rules are elsewhere, and also the lack of support that's been put in place so that people are very worried about the impact of further measures here um, on their livelihoods, on their jobs and on their businesses. That's why we think we need a holistic solution, a, a solution for the whole country that also recognises that although here in Greater Manchester we have um, alarmingly high rates of infection and rising. Uh, other parts of the country are seeing the same trend. Uh, right across the country, the spread of the infection is rising. And that's why we think we need national action now before the situation gets worse, gets out of control, becomes really dangerous right across the country, um, and that we have a proper package of support wrapped around that uh, circuit breaker so that people know that their livelihoods and their businesses will be, will be looked after. It's not really true to suggest that Greater Manchester has got the say, similar rates of uh, COVID as elsewhere, though, is it? The rates in uh, areas uh, such as the northwest are far, far higher than in other uh, parts of the country. I'm just looking, uh, for example, nine out of ten boroughs in Greater Manchester have seen the rate of COVID infections increase in the last week. 
Uh, Hospitalisations uh, in Greater Manchester now higher than at the start of the national lockdown in March. On current trends in two weeks' time, there will be more COVID patients in intensive care in Manchester than at the peak of the first wave. So surely, should um, Greater Manchester now go into tier three of restrictions? I'm absolutely clear that we must have measures here that address what is an absolute public health emergency for us. You're quite right to highlight these really terrifying figures. And it's important that measures are taken really swiftly. And we need a deal very, very quickly um, if it's going to be a local um, arrangement between the government and local leaders here. But we do need that deal to include proper support for people's jobs, for their businesses, for their livelihoods. Because if that's not put in place alongside tougher restrictions, we know the restrictions won't work. People will not be able to. They won't be able to afford to shut down their businesses. They won't be able uh, to afford forward to stay at home and isolate when they need to. It is so important that action is taken swiftly. On the circuit breaker though, Sophie, it's not me who is saying um, alone we should do this. This was the advice of sage scientists to the government a month ago. They believe this would be the most effective way of arresting the spread of the virus across just the to whole be, country. Just to be and I'm pretty shocked. I'm pretty shocked that the, just get, let me just finish this point. Yep. I am pretty shocked and I, I think most people are pretty shocked that the government for a month has ignored that advice and done nothing. Just to be crystal clear, because my question was, should Greater Manchester go into Tier 3 of restrictions? Well, we definitely need additional measures here. Tier 3 restrictions with support, with an extra package of support, so that the restrictions have the best chance of actually being effective. But my so preference, yes, Labour's preference, as you know, it's a yes, but my preference is that Labour's... Uh, um, call, as you know, is for a national circuit breaker because we think in the long run that will be more effective, more quickly than this constant patchwork of, as you say, checking in and then never being able to check out of local restrictions that people don't understand and where already we can see they're not proving effective. Uh, it's interesting to say how um, some of the restrictions aren't proving effective because, of course, restrictions will only be effective if people actually follow uh, the rules. Um, the government saying uh, that police are going to have access uh, to people who have been contacted and told to self-isolate. Do you think that's a good idea? Well, I noticed that the chief medical officer said he was very worried about that because, of course, it might deter people from even going to have a test. And clearly, we, of course, people must obey the rules. And it's really important that people understand the rules. So they need to be communicated very clearly. But at the same time, we absolutely want people who are worried that they have symptoms to go and be tested and, and not to deter them from doing so. And I do question, you know, where the police resources are going to come from to, to follow up um, all this information. So um, I really wonder just how much substance there is to this or whether it's, it's just some kind of political announcement that actually isn't going to deliver in practice. OK, uh, and just finally, uh, while well, we've got you, uh, Marcus Rashford, the uh, Manchester United footballer, is uh, asking the government to provide free school meals uh, to children when schools are on holiday. Now, Number 10 have said it's not for schools to provide meals when they're actually on holiday. They've got a point, haven't they? No, they haven't got a point because families are in a desperate situation at the moment. You know, parents are losing jobs because of the COVID crisis. Uh, they're really worrying about how they're going to put food on the table for their children. We're talking about people on desperately low income, Sophie, really worried about how they're going to feed their kids. Uh, and, you know, I'm standing, you know, half a mile from Old Trafford. I pay huge tribute to what Marcus Rashford has done to bring this to public attention. And did persuade the government that they would need to provide school meals over the summer holidays. Labour's calling for that to be continued during this academic year, while we're in the depths of this crisis, right through all the school holidays and half terms this year. It's so important that these children get a proper healthy meal. We know families are under huge financial pressure and this would make an enormous difference to them.